do you agree if I say that every one of you is actually an artist? Okay, let's remember back to those days. How do we learn to read? We sing the alphabet. A, B, C, D, E, F, G. Although it's actually the same with twinkle, twinkle, little star. How do we learn to count? We draw apple. One apple plus two apple is equal to three apple. And how do we know things? We read. We um, experience things. So we are all introduced to knowledge through arts. However, in this intelligent world, of course, arts are always compared to math and pure sciences. Most parents will encourage their children to get into math and science, but never arts. It is always being said that to be intelligent is to be good in math and science. Why? Because math and science is evident, truth, concrete, quantifiable, facts, and reliable, where arts Arts, other than beauty, is seen as something intangible, subjective, and abstract. There are no clear yes or no, or good or bad in arts. People see art as an unreliable form of knowledge because it is too subjective. You can say something and the other can say something else, and we cannot even prove who's right or who's wrong. So what good can this blurry and chaotic subject brings good to us. So today, I'm here to convince you otherwise. I want to open your eyes that intelligence today are only achievable to activating your artsy side. Hi, I'm Ahmad Hakim bin Ahmad Hilmi. I'm the founder of an organization called KL Sketch Nation. Um, we have about 130 registered members who love to get out in weekends and sketch in the city and meet other people. In KL Sketch Nation, surprisingly, more than 60% are not even from arts background. These people are doctors, accountants, engineers, computer programmers, linguists, and others. And the other 40% is from architecture, landscape, and not really many that are actually into fine arts. However, these people, we get together because of the love of art. I am an architect by profession, and now I am actually um, finishing my PhD soon, hopefully, in architecture. But my works are focusing more into cognitive psychology in drawing. Although I'm an architect, yes, I do psychology, and I am also a multi-enthusiast. I have passion in a lot of different forms of arts. I draw, I play music, I write songs and poetry, I cook, I do photography, I do filming, and many more. This is because I love going around the world and explore cities and meet people and try food, try to listen to their music and whatever to experience things. <clears throat> well, architecture is actually the best example of a cross between arts and science. Architecture is only structure, but it is actually driven by the people because the people inhabit the structure, thus does it become architecture. What we desire, what we're comfortable with, and our taste, etc., is what really makes a structure um, more valuable. That is when I realized that arts is actually the complex part of us. Art is actually a complexity of human beings. The people are what putting values in a lot of things. Architecture, food, song, language, culture, towards economy, politics, and these are the things that matter, isn't it? And through this, I discovered that art actually the essential part of our everyday and every knowledge studies. Art is what makes human complex, and complexity is what complements human beings. It's not that odd if I can easily say that there's a lot of well remarkable person in different fields uses arts and science to get to the people. Because through this, we rediscover intelligence. For example, you can see uh, the work of uh, Mark Zuckerberg connecting computer programming from the sciences 
facts and numbers and codings and whatnot with social interaction to actually give life to Facebook and becoming the number one site that people always go. Same idea with Steve Jobs. He's using telecommunication, telecommunication and also technologies to actually infuse it with lifestyle and create Apple. And now they have the power to change the world. But then if you look back, how do we really first achieve intelligence? From the philosopher king to the Renaissance person, gentleman, scholar, polymath, and the modern polymath. We explore and being critical of things. For example, when we created, when, when Alexander Graham Bell created the telephone, do you think that he just woke up one day and say, oh, I want to build a telephone? Or the Wright brothers, you know, just out of the blue saying that, hey, let's build an airplane. No. Yes, art is intangible and abstract, but those are what make possible to explore into the unknown and mystery. They dream of flying. They start to think of how do we connect through, through space and time, through uh, uh, different geographic, geographical contexts to actually achieve something. And then look at the norm of our working culture today. We are trained robots. You know, our education system is based on study and letters and numbers. These are the everyday that we can see. You see? So in kindergarten, we learn arts to explore and imagine. You know, we are asked to uh, imagine a monster, imagine to draw uh, creatures and fantasy and whatnot. And playing with shapes, playing with songs, we sing every day in the kindergarten. But what happened when we go to primary school and then secondary school? It has become the race of grades and numbers. We learn for just for the sake of exam. We memorize syllabus for us to excel in exam. These have led us to neglecting the thinking part of reasoning. And life has become all dull and unmeaningful. And so it disrupts our will to go better. Okay? So, activity time. I hope you guys ready with your pen and papers with you now. Okay. Okay, so today we are going to draw something. The technique of this is actually to not think. I want you guys to stop thinking, but rather to follow these three rules that I'm going to share with you. Okay. I'm going to unleash the Picasso of, in all of you today. Okay, this is the three rules. First, I want the eyes on the subject. I will ask you guys to draw something and the eyes on the subject. You cannot look at your drawing while you're drawing. The eyes is only on the subject. Or in this case, only on the screen. Okay? And then I want you guys to draw in just one line. Means that don't lift up your pen until you're done. And the third rule is to have to draw in only 30 seconds. You guys get it? Okay, let me tell you a tip. This is called the hand-eye coordina um, hand coordination technique. Okay, So imagine that of the subject, look at your screen, your screen. The subject, imagine a red dot. Imagine a red dot on the subject and on the paper. And then when you move the red dot with your mind, move your hand as well. Means that it's going to be a contour drawing. It's going to be a one line drawing. But while drawing the subject, I want you guys to just focus on the subject, on the thing that you're gonna, you guys are going to draw. Okay, you guys ready? And today, I'm going to ask you guys to do, to draw something very complicated. Okay, I want you guys to draw me. I want you guys to look at uh, the speaker view and uh, look at my face. Okay, I think I go back a bit. Okay, so when I count to three, I want you guys to start drawing and capture as much as you can until the timer turns off. So I'm going to set the timer to 30 seconds. Okay, everyone ready? So eyes on me, imagine a red dot 
and draw as much as you can in 30 seconds. Don't look at the paper. All right, are you guys ready? If you guys ready, give me a thumbs up. All right, who that's everyone. Okay, ready? One, two, and 30 seconds starts now. Eyes on the subject. 20 seconds left. Ten seconds. Five, four, three, two, one. Done. All right. I want you guys to look at your drawings. And please, can you guys please show your drawings to your camera right now? I want everyone so that we can have the committee to actually take a photo of your drawing. Fantastic. All right. So I bet your drawing looks something like this. No? Okay. Sorry. No. I think it's more looking like this, right? Yeah. That drawing just now was actually done by the whole uh, committee community of the chaos extension for my birthday um, earlier a few months ago so this is what it should be looking you know 30 seconds drawing even if it's disfigured even if it's look weird you will get the essence of the subject you see here you can actually see the features you know all of you draw your works out of your subconscious without even you realizing it you draw you are drawn to the most distinctive picture of myself. You see, a lot of you guys got my hair, my beard, and my specs, and my nose. Because that are what my profile is. And these drawings are sincere. There's no prejudice, no planning, no thinking involved. Just the point and your pen goes around my face and get whatever that you think subconsciously significant of my character. You know, um, this is actually to, um, to, for you to know the value and thought process that give you the taste of your subconscious mind. Okay, the first um, rule, the eyes on the subject, is basically for us to focus on the goal. You know, only think of the red dot. I don't want you guys to think about other things and whatnot. The second one is actually drawing in one line to actually eliminate your inferiority because you know that everyone is doing the same techniques you have no time to actually judge yourself or others and that is the, th the 30 second rule to frame your expectation if i give you one hour to draw you will start to think too much you start to overthink you start to imagine how will the other will draw and what are the kind of thing and then it will stop you from drawing usually so, without you even realizing it, our artsy side is actually shape our intelligence. The more you embrace it, the more you gain from it. And that's all from me, Amar Hakim Ahmad Hilmi from Chaos Expansion. Thank you very much.